Hello and welcome back to the good old Southern IA. It's hay season. The weather sticks telling us to mow hay. If you're new to the channel, hello, how are you, and where have you been? You probably don't know that my name is Ben. I'm a second generation farmer working on a family farm, taking you guys along with us, showing you the trials and tribulations and things that we have to deal with or I have to deal with as a young farmer in this day and age. But today we're kicking off hay season. You're ready to go, bud. You mowing hay, you staying on the way. Well, I guess the going's good, so I might as well get getting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think Bandit's probably gonna go with me today. Okay. See what he thinks. <laughs> hey, well, let's go. Get up there. Get in the tractor. I ain't picking you up. I know you can climb up in here because you climb up in here every time the door's open and it's running. Told you. Really, what's been the big to do around here since I left you guys last, where we fixed the 4440s muffler? Really, not too much. Actually, the same day that we were working on that 4440 turn and changing the muffler, the muffler on the Volvo High B semi truck brought it out. So we ended up tearing that one off and putting a new one on and for the most part it went pretty good. And then after that I was approached by uh, a company to do a fungicide trial for them. So it looks like we're going to do about a 40 acre every other skip row style. So really it's going to be about an 80 acre fungicide trial in 120 foot swaths. So we're going to do that for them this year. Andrew then proceeded to learn that he should not stand under a tarp uh, when you're hooking up a semi because it holds rain. After that, him soaked and me still dry, spent the rest of the day we uh, changed the oil on a four-wheeler and uh, did a couple other things, which one of them was, was actually to see if we can get the corner here. Come on, girl. Let's wrap it around. We actually pulled out this mower right back here behind me and got it hooked up serviced up looked pretty good to go we installed the second midland radio into this tractor so now this 6430 has a cb radio in it and the 4440 which is already up at the hay field where we're going to be mowing my dad's going to be operating it today uh we can chitter chatter a little bit and get some hay mowed down what do you guys say we go down the road and so here we are in this first field. I gotta take the six stops out of the raise lower situation. What we've decided to do here is this, there's about 60 some odd acres here. And we're pretty much just gonna hit the reset button on this farm. We're gonna put beans in here as soon as we get this hay crop off. And then decide where we're gonna wanna row crop on this farm, where we wanna have the hay in the ground. So we're gonna row crop the part of the farm that's not very erodible and put hay in the other part of it and have a uniform hay versus like this field here is I think it's like 35 acres and it has three different blends of hay in it it makes it kind of difficult and what I've decided to do is just take you guys along with us on this first hay cutting deal in a vlog style fashion so you might as well hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell next to it that way you know when we post the videos throughout this hay process here if you're wondering, and if you've watched my planting vlogs, planting is not done. Close, but not done, and we will continue on with those. Starting to be. But as of right now, giggity, giggity, let's go mowing, paying, cutting, blue healering. Do you blue healer? Do you know how to blue healer? I don't know if you know how to blue healer. I think you know. Think you can human. You cannot human though. You you can't do either. You're kind of stuck in the middle. Uh, B two. Throttle up. 
forward go. Let's see if we mow. six swaths all the way around the outside of the field. Uh, to do that, I mow clockwise five times, so five loops around the field, and then I turn around and I go counterclockwise around the outside of the field again. Hold on, I gotta pick up. Turn it. I actually got a sliver over here I gotta go get. go counterclockwise the last pass because this mower is always over this shoulder right here it's not a hydra swing it just swings out to one side and then that gives me six passes all the way around the outside of the field and then I just usually pick a point like a tree or a telephone pole or a power pole somewhere in the distance and I just drive straight at it and that gives us these nice straighter rows which is easier to rake and then it's also easier for the baler man to bail because you're not trying to curve all over the place. So now I'm on the inside of this field. Like I said, my dad actually has now just started going up there. I can see him. This field has three different types of hay in it. Uh, this is kind of an alfalfa mix that's uh, kind of dying off here. It has some weeds in it, but it also has a good bit of timothy and orchard grass in it. And then over here is basically just an orchard grass and alfalfa patch. That looks like pretty decent hay. And then other couple places like that hill and that hill over there kind of had a failed seeding from last year. So our plan is, is even though that's a good first cutting of hay, it doesn't produce anything on the second or so cutting. I know that I've farmed this farm before. So we're just, our hope is, is to get the beans put in here after we get this baled off. And then next year, we'll choose what should be row cropped and what we should have in hay for the, basically, the profitability and also the health of this farm to keep this farm extremely healthy, keep the soil where it needs to be. Uh, and then we'll come up with a mix. Probably it'll end up being a, a Timothy orchard grass and alfalfa mix is what we'll probably put in here. Uh, and that will make 
really darn nice small square bales for people. This mower pairs pretty well with this tractor. Um, in essence, where it swings out to uh, is exactly one path where the left hand tires are. So as I go around the outside of the field on the first pass, I essentially put this tire right here, bandit watches it for me, right where I want the edge of the hay field to be. And then as on the back swath, you can tell right there's that tire track. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera or not. But basically, that is just mowing directly where that is. So, it really works out pretty darn good. Uh, every now and then I watch videos and some guys swing their mower out there uh, to the edge first. I think that seems risky, you know. Uh, you never know if you might end up in the fence or a tree limb or something like that is falling down along the edge of the wear of your hand. Uh, and it, this just seems like the safer way of doing it. Plus it works pretty good with this. Now I can see how it might not work that good when you're like using a, uh, a big hay vine that doesn't really match up with the tractor too good. This one does. Oh, by the way, that flat's done. Everybody's wondering I'm mowing at about six mile an hour. You staying in or getting out? You got the air conditioner blowing on your belly there. I saw that. Stay away from that mower. Stay away from that mower. What do you think, Blue Dog? So right here we can actually check out the two differences between the haze that uh, we're mowing here. This one right here has a lot of orchard grass and has Timothy grass in it. It's just dying off, so it's kind of a very inconsistent deal. Here's your alfalfa, the legume portion of it. There's your orchard grass heads right there. Um, I don't see any Timothy heads in this piece right here right now. But you, it's a lot stemmier right there, a lot thicker. I think that's a Timothy head. I'm pretty sure that's a Timothy head right there. That'd be a Timothy head. And then if we move over here, this is, uh, I think it's more bromy. Uh, pretty sure it's bromy. This grass right here has some alfalfa on it. It's had some bugs eating on the alfalfa. It's decent. It's about three foot tall because I'm oh, over six foot or so. Um, it, it's making a pretty good windrow. I don't know how many bales an acre it's going to do. It just depends on how heavy are the bales the baler man makes for us but there's your alfalfa i mean that's a pretty good looking first cutting hay for a good bit of time i thought pretty much pure alfalfa was the way that i wanted to go for the hay i've changed that a pure alfalfa is very finicky as and it will thin out on you pretty easily um B, for us, it's extremely hard to put up into really good quality alfalfa bales. And it just, when you start baling alfalfa in the morning, it can be too tough. And then by the end of the day, it can be too dry. It's like, it's just a very finicky product. If it's in a pure form, like a pure alfalfa bale. And for us in this area, a pure alfalfa bale actually doesn't sell as good as like an alfalfa orchard grass or an alfalfa timothy orchard grass mix so that's why i'm going to try and shoot for on these new seedings it is the later cuttings i'll maybe have like a 50 50 grass alfalfa mix and the earlier cuttings a uh, 20 to 35 or so percent orchard grass to out which orchard grass would be the higher portion of that to alfalfa people around here really like that for their horses where they can just be uh basically hay to them with the alfalfa in there and they don't really have to worry too much about the hay being too potent or too high energy for their horses it's a really good mix and for us that's like a major win-win situation because a uh, the more people like the hay, the more value there is in the hay, the more you can get for your small square bales. Plus, when we put 
put that grass in there with that alfalfa, it, it really makes putting up the hay significantly easier. Putting up grass hay to a legume hay is a, there's no doubt, grass hay is the easiest hay to put up. No doubt. You trying to get some scratches? You know people gotta like the video for you to get the scratches though. But I'll give you a couple anyways. I was just rubbing here and I don't like that, so we're gonna try and get that up in the air better. That way I don't end up with a hydraulic leak that I gotta deal with. Definitely been rubbing on those hooks a little bit. Simple fix, back to mowing. Who's here? Is it a pretty lunch lady? It's a pretty lunch lady. Whoop! Whoop, there she is. What? Uh, he was just chasing her around. I'm sure she don't go under the mower. Bye. I know. There ain't nowhere to ride in here. Bye, little girl. Thanks for lunch! Up. There we go. Well, good deal. Bandit and I are done with this section over here. Uh, that last stuff I cut wasn't very pretty. But we're going to actually now move across the way to... There's an eagle. Getting chased by a black wing, black, red... I think they call them red-winged blackbirds. They're kind of laundry birds. But we're going to move across the way here, go see if we can catch up with my dad, see how he's getting along, help him finish up this field, and uh, we'll wrap up the mowing for uh, the day. I, I think this is all we're going to mow. It's probably enough to tackle if the weather turns out to be a little bit better. I wouldn't be surprised if we mow some more tomorrow. I'd like to probably maybe try and tend this. You know, it might be a good deal because uh, I think it's supposed to get pretty darn windy here. Tomorrow or Tuesday? One of the days it's supposed to, it's supposed to be hot and windy. Good for drying hay. Up, 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 up. Screwed up. I went into the bank. That means that there's dirt on this bar. And I get to go clean the dirt off. I think we'll go up there into the cut grass to do that. Also, that keeps you from going into that and stinking in here the rest of the day, Blue Dog. Because I don't need a stinky blue healer in this cab today. Okay. Where is it at? Full of dirt. Come on. I bet you didn't know you could cut sod with one of these. Oh. Sorry, mower. I should have known better not to do that. big deal as long as you catch it quickly because it'll burn the slip clutch so right up here you can actually see where I screwed up so like I think this is like a designed overflow or something right here this gets really steep like really steep so basically as I went down the mower could flex with me and it's just I don't even know if it's it might cut into that now it did cut into that bank right there holy smokes
We're getting there. Dad's working on that side right there. I'm working on this side going into the NASCAR circle here. My uh, Case IH tears gauge is getting a little bit low on me. Uh, I don't actually know when it gets to actually empty. I don't know if it's just sometime in the red or if it actually has to get down there. Don't really want to find out. All in all, I think we've maybe got like an acre and a half or so left. Ain't won't gonna take us very well. It ain't gonna us, but take us a lot. We'll be done soon. Up there in the tree, you guys can see that little speck right there. That's a juvenile bald eagle. He's been watching us most of the day because we'll chase a rabbit out of the grass. He'll swoop down here and try and catch it. Uh, that's pretty darn cool. I don't know if my dad's noticed him or not yet, but yeah, he's he's just been hanging out, waiting for something to come out. That's about what I can do because he's mowing with the mower on the opposite side than I have it on. So I can't go in the same circle as he does. So he's just got this little strip right here to finish up anyways. It says there's more up here. I thought he'd gotten it all. That's what I was going to ask him anyways. We'll go find it. I'm pretty sure I got my arm sunburned. I had the sunroof open for a little bit. I think you got me. Well, we're pretty much done here, so we're gonna convoy home and uh, call it a day. So thank you guys for hanging out with us down here in Southern Iowa. Mowing on the first cutting of hay. We got 60 some odd acres down today. Good deal. Hopefully we can get it bailed up and wrapped up and moved out and soybeans planted before the next rain. We'll see you then. So I kind of, I'd worked with these guys quite a few years before I rented this place here. And really, <clears throat> kind of essentially, I planted corn one year. Then that year, I think I did small square bales with them. And then I harvested corn and then they planted soybeans and then they had someone else plant some corn. And I'd always harvested their crops basically for them. And uh, really what happened was, was actually one year, I think it was two, three years ago, it, it was like frozen, like really late fall uh, and the ground was frozen and I was trying to pick their soybeans and I was just about done and I was on one of these steep hills here, like I am right now, you can tell behind me, it's like we're on some terrain right now. And the ground had frozen just enough, the whole combine just slid down the hill, right into the woods like that. Learned a really stark lesson, really stark lesson. When you're on a side hill and it's a little bit slippy, or if you're on a side hill at all, make sure your auger is on the uphill side because an auger was on the downhill side. And you wanna see my dad not very happy with me. Uh, and I basically, I split two trees with the auger, unload auger. Didn't hit anything, got super lucky, but I split two trees with the unload auger. We had, we stopped, went and got a four wheel drive tractor to hook onto it, chainsaw, chainsaw down the two trees. Dad finished ice kicking out those beans, but man, whew, bucker factor was real hot. But you learn. Luckily, and it didn't cost me an unload auger or my dad an unload auger. 